Okay, so we look at Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the closed beta, and my thoughts on it. So I've decided to split out my thoughts on a game and the 21 by 9 facts on a game for any new releases, as the ultra-wide support frequently needs updating nowadays, so it works better than having the two split. So when I do an update video, my thoughts on the actual gameplay, which isn't changing, don't get lost in the original first video. Anyway, into Mirror's Edge Catalyst's beta. In the beta, you are introduced to the conglomerates and where you stand, and essentially they give you a quick overview of the world in its current state, and it helps paint the picture enough for you to believe you have a reason to be running around in this white and red world, and honestly myself, and I'm sure most people, won't really care about the story, as long as it holds up enough to give you a sense of reason to keep running around then I just have no problem. My main love of the game comes from trying to get from A to B as fast as possible. I'm not looking for heart-wrenching moments that can only be fixed by running along a rooftop. <laughs> that just doesn't really work. But thankfully Dying so clearly aware of this, and of what the beta offers, it has the perfect mix of some story, but really the focus has clearly been on the development of the world that you're running in, and the freedom you get within that world. So first of all, go on the linear routes from the first game. Instead, this just paints a start and finish point, and you either follow the highlighted route or choose your own. So what I found was that I would first follow the highlighted route to allow me to actually see where I needed to go. Then I would replay the scenario over and over and over until I could complete it as best I could. And I love that. It drives that desire to get as perfect a run as possible out of any kind of engagement, and it works so well. Now both running and combat have seen big boosts in their technical prowess. You can do and execute a massively improved number of moves, and combat especially has benefited from this. As we all know, the first game really sucked at any combat, and DICE have managed to completely turn that around. It's not perfect, but it's gone from a huge annoyance to an element which is sometimes an effort, but frequently, when done right, extremely satisfying. So now you're given many ways to beat down your opponents, but by far my favourite is the running quick hits. This way you don't pause your run, instead quickly smacking an enemy out of the way cleanly, and then you get back to full speed. And this really proves the point that DICE has pushed to ensure this game always remains fluid. Every move can be executed one after the other efficiently and effectively without making you slow down and break your flow. That said, it's not like they don't give you the extremely tempting choice to stop. Unfortunately, the world is littered, like any AAA game now, with a gigantic number of pickups, and whilst this usually doesn't bother me in other titles, in this it does, because I can't help but want to pick up any and all the little bits I see around the world, but when you do that, it means you have to stop your run, click A, do the animation, and then go back to running. Literally all that's achieved is ruining the fluid run that you were doing just for a little pickup. Now you might argue that, well, just don't pick up the items, ignore them. But when those items allow for more XP and general development in the game, then you feel obligated to pick them up. So in a way, DICE is fighting itself by wanting to provide this beautifully fluid and uninterrupted experience, but at the same time trying to make you stop all the time to pick up another pointless chip, or whatever, from a wall. And these pickup items are everywhere, quite literally covering the environment, and really it's the only pitfall of the entire beta for me. Anyway, the story of the game is told in two ways, one through pre-rendered cutscenes and one through in-game ones. The pre-rendered are a fantastic improvement over the still images from the first game, and the animations and detail to the world is great. Yes, they hunt 21 by 9 but as I said in my technical breakdown of the game, the sides being whited out instead of black means they're far more enjoyable to watch nonetheless. And on this point, the fact that the game supports 21 so perfectly, especially compared to the first game, which lacked any support, and even modding support is far from perfect, it means the whole experience is just dramatically improved. 
The experience of racing through and traversing the world at 21x9 is just a phenomenal improvement over 16x9, and one anyone looking to upgrade to an ultra-wide monitor should absolutely try out. The graphics are beautiful, yes the world is a little basic in some details, but that works for Mirror's Edge. I genuinely feel that that is part of what it is. It focuses on making the experience of the run the primary joy. The streets and buildings below are not to be bothered about because it's the rooftops that are supposed to capture your focus, and the texture quality and lighting are all beautiful anyway. So yes, all in all, the graphics to the game look great. Now something the extra screen space really provides is the ability for you to get a better feel of your environment and help you pick out where you can go next as you don't want to move your head whilst you're running in a line because that will cause you to run in a different direction. Instead you find yourself glancing around the visible area on screen to pick your next move and so having more screen space to look around is genuinely useful. Even though this is in beta, and so quite literally is supposed to be a small bite-sized look at a game, I never felt restricted by this. It's got a lovely open area to play in, with missions and objectives to complete, and it kept me engaged for a solid amount of playing. But it did start to worry me. What are they going to do to keep you interested in both the world and gameplay outside of the main story? Yes, it's really good having the ability to create dashes through the world for you and your friends to complete the fastest time, but the obvious point is it's all around the simple premise of running in a very samey environment. However, saying that, seeing the amount of work that has been done to increase the ways in which you can move and traverse the world, I would say that it's going to be, at least for me, a game that I play entirely through just focused really on the story after which I'll go and play other games, but every so often I'll come back and play through new missions and challenges which my friends or just other people around the world have created, because Mirror's Edge has that kind of gameplay that I haven't experienced and I still haven't found in any other game, and with the significant improvements made to this second release over the first, I'm sure I'll always have that desire to return to the world routinely. On the question of would I buy DLC for the game, I doubt it. I love it, but I don't know what would make me want to spend more on it. Obviously we'll find out with the full release, but I wouldn't be fussed about new environments or other characters. So if DLC does arrive, yeah, I just don't think I'd drop money for it. But arguably, that is a great thing to be able to say, as it means the experience they have provided in the base game is solid. They haven't skimped on anything just to be able to call it DLC later in order to complete the world. So again, it's looking good for DICE and good for the final release. Anyway, overall, this is a solid beta, and if the full release just builds on this, then this will be an absolute must-buy recommendation from me. With fantastic ultra-wide support and fantastic gameplay to boot, why wouldn't it be? So I hope that gives you a better idea of what this game has to offer at 21x9, and if you want to see the exact 21x9 info and how it actually technically supports 21x9, then go and check out my video either in the description or on screen now or over on my channel. Give this video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe for future info. For any other games at 21x9, head over to my channel, hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, then links to my Patreon page are in the description. See you later.